A friend of mine here last year. He's now back in his hometown of Massachusetts. He told me the story right in this city. There were two hates that he had beyond measure. He was born in Boston of Irish parents. His parents came from Ireland. He was born in a strict Catholic family with all the prejudices of a Catholic Irish in the city of Boston. In other words, Jews were the murderers of Christ. He believed that. He was taught that in his home. He was taught that no Jew was good. Because only the Christian was. The Jew couldn't be saved. The kid didn't know how to discriminate. He believed it. So he hated Jews. He hated Negroes. And he hated them. He said, I didn't dislike them there, but I hated them. Well, then came the war. And he found himself in the Pacific. A sergeant in the U.S. forces. A private was a Jew. He gave him all the dirty work he could possibly give him. And he had to take it because he was a sergeant and the other was a private. And one day they were pinned down, 150 in his company. The Japanese had them completely covered with machine guns. The slightest move and everything would ricochet off their helmets. As I barely budged just one second, as I could just rise just an inch part of an inch, my helmet became something where there was a spot and it ricocheted all off my helmet. We couldn't, we really couldn't move. And the private said to me, Sarge, do you have any hand grenades? And I said, yes. He said, let me have a few. And he stuck his hands sl slowly across, but they couldn't see him. And I detached from my belt three hand grenades. And that man waited just a few seconds. And suddenly he jumped as though he were on a spring. He jumped up, in spite of the fact it meant almost sudden death, and with these pins pulled properly, he just simply let them go. He blew to pieces the entire nest of Japanese. He was severely wounded, but he recovered. And Neville, at that very moment, I not only lost my hate, it was converted into love. From that moment on, I fell in love with the Jew. Not just that man, but Jews in general. I fell in love with them. So in my little business here in the city, handling bricks and mortar and everything that a mason would use, if a Jew came, he got the job first. I was back here. I still hadn't overcome my hate of the Negro. And an accident took place where I worked. And my uniform, that is my working clothes, caught fire. I am burning. No Caucasian came to help me. And a Negro broke ranks and came forward and threw me on the ground, turned me over several times and put that fire out with his body. He was severely burned in the act. But I was saved. And no Caucasian helped me. And at that very moment, something similar happened to me. I, I didn't lose the hate I had for the Negro. It was converted into love. And I loved them. And when I went out to the job and I got a job needing workmen, the Negro came, he got the job. The Jew got the job. And I can't tell you now, but when I tell you, I didn't dislike them. I hated them. In my limited environment in Boston, Massachusetts, raised in the environment of a very restricted mental state, I left that home of mine, my mother's only child, hating, just thinking that if my, I could only hit someone, I got evil with them that way. I couldn't do a thing with my tongue. I couldn't argue with them. It was always a violent reaction until this thing happened to me. So I say, man is purified by the death of his delusions. And God, and only God, can actually devise the means by which that delusion is rubbed out. How could he have devised the means to put a Jew next to him and find himself tied down by the Japanese and their fire? But God had devised the entire thing for this man's heart to be purified. So like gold in the furnace, so that certainly is a furnace, I have tried them and received them unto myself as pure gold. And so what is more a furnace than to be faced by the enemy fire with all this and be tied on the ground by the fire. So we are told in the book of Isaiah, I have tried you in the furnaces of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how shall my name be dishonored, be profaned? For my glory, I will not give to another. For well, God's glory is himself. Grace is God's gift of himself to man. 
to give himself to you so there's no doubt in your mind that he actually succeeded in conveying himself and giving himself to you you would have to be pure in heart and he purifies you he does